teams are moving more and more towards Red Bull. What's your reaction to it, to the kind of copying, and did you expect to happen it sooner or later? Uh, I think our next upgrade will be without side pods, so then everyone can go back to that. I see if all that trash talking starts when it's zero zero, but when you're ahead, it's easy to talk. You know, in sports, sometimes you get these moments where the sea change just sort of happens. These moments are game changers. Think Lux tires Brazil 08. Oh my goodness me! Hamilton's back in position again! Think LeBron's block. James out of nowhere, Sky. Think David Tyree's helmet catch. This ball's thrown and Tyree just goes up for it like a basketball player. The momentum shift is instant. It's jump off the page, obvious. But sometimes the winds of change are a bit more, well, a bit more subtle. Almost undetectable to even the most discerning of eyes. And you know, I think there might have been one such instance at the Spanish Grand Prix this past weekend. And Formula One is racing for the Spanish Grand Prix. Something that absolutely nobody spotted. But let's take stop for just one second. Here's where we're at. <laughs> And Formula One in 2023 is go! It's 2023 and the balls that are red, well, they have the whip hand. In terms of absolute pace, no team is even in the same stratosphere as them. At the Circuit de Catalunya, however, some say the Merck have made progress. But let's not kid ourselves, Mercedes always go really well around here. And what with cool attempts and all, their performance last weekend, well... Flatters to deceive, just a tad. Oh, and by the way, if you think the gap was big between Red Bull and the rest in 22, in 23, it is gargantuan. And how do we know this? Well, here's how. Lewis finished second in Spain, some 24 seconds behind Verstappen. In a Grand Prix 66 laps long, that's an average of four tenths per lap, let's say. Quick maths. Okay, so that's a gap, right? But nothing too crazy. But peep this. In the race for fastest lap, five laps to go, Max Verstappen puts in a 116.3. One lap later, Lewis responds in anger with a 116.7. Okay, cool. Four tenths, like we said, right? That's in line with our calc. But there's one key difference here, though. Down the start finish rate, Lewis had DRS. That alone is four tenths worth. So what does all this mean, Cameron? What it means is that Verstappen and Red Bull, wary of the inevitable FIA intervention, are sandbagging mahusively. And if we're going to compare apples with apples, Max's advantage is anywhere between eight tenths and a second. In F1 money, that's an absolute lifetime. It means then that in the RB19, we might be looking at another MP44 scenario. Yeah, mate, most dominant car in history settings. And there are reasons for this. Because for whatever you want to say about them, the bulls of the red variety, they are a slick outfit, aren't they? They're the best in class in just about every area that matters. Quickest pit stops, least enforced errors, god tier strategy, and all of this in perpetuity almost. They're unbeatable this lot. Not to mention their personnel. Talk about market leading. I mean, Horner cuts a polarizing figure that much we are aware of. But if you're in the trenches and you've got to take one team principal with you, Christian Horner every single time. That's not even up for debate. And of course, they have the goatiest of aero buffings in Adrian Newey, a fellow who, to the despair of the other 19s, has just recommitted on a long-term deal with Red Bull. Oh, the humanity. I mean, it's not like he's got form or anything. He's only designed 10 championship winning cars already. He even studied ground effect at uni for Pete's sake, and so to nail these rules and regs, he only had to dust off his old uni books. It should be no surprise then that he designed himself a floor that's more tricked out than Megatron. Oh, truly weapons grade is this RB19. Its gift is in its aero efficiency, and in this ground effect era, that's going to be hard for anyone to beat, not least Mercedes, who have given everyone as near as makes no difference a 16 month head start. What are we doing here? But, and this is a big but, two trophyless years for an outfit as good as Mercedes. Well, that's a long time, right? Lest we forget that F1 is a fluid beast and sometimes the winds of change are subtle. Undetectable even to the most discerning guy. In Spain then, whilst the gap to the race lead might flatter to deceive a tad, Merck have definitely improved their race pace versus the rest. And this after only one race worth of development bodes well. Because they're at the very beginning of the steepest of learning curves, there's a lot of time left on the table still. And to help them catch the balls of the red variety, Mercedes have a shed load of wind tunnel time spare. In stark contrast, Red Bull do not. Lead buffing James Allison is back aboard the good ship Mercedes. Oh, by the way, he's the chap responsible for all the good Mercedes cars. You know, the championship winning ones. It's 
It's seven consecutive Constructors' Championships for Mercedes. And with Russell now committed to a new long-term contract and Toto and Lewis not far behind, this is starting to feel like an inflection point. As if Mercedes are refueling for another few hot laps, another couple runs at Silverware. Some say that much like Pride, trash talk comes before a fall. Yeah. <laughs> And whilst there's no current sign of Red Bull slowing down anytime soon, who knows how much this trash talk and banter is motivating the guys and girls at Brackley. That Mercedes have turned a corner isn't up for debate. And so for Red Bull, now might not be the time to be drinking their own Kool-Aid or kicking dust in the face of their rivals. Because after a humiliating 2022 and the embarrassment of Sidepod Gate, the house of Mercedes is full ammo on motivation. Toto absolutely won't want to rock up to too many board meetings and have to answer for so much non-winning. Because for whatever you want to say about Toto, he is absolutely a pioneer, a chap who has blazed the trail. This fellow is almost single-handedly responsible for the rise of Mercedes as a force in F1. Over that period of time, he's 10 times Mercedes advertising value. That's ridiculous. And so he would go about saying then that this fella does not like Losing. One of the worst days uh, in, uh, in racing. So you can bet your bottom dollar that the one thing he won't tolerate, Lewis and George neither, is disrespect nor trash talking. Unwittingly then this past weekend, Max might have awoken a Mercedes beast and in so doing, subtly invoked the winds of F1 change. The Spanish Grand Prix then in the story of Red Bull dominance might just be a tipping point. Thank <laughs> you.